بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Assalamu alaikum rahmatullah dear viewers welcome back alhamdulillah we back to you tower again you know it's one of the favorite show in ikra i think so i'm glad you guys come back you know i hope we're watching the same guys as well in our show today we're going to talk about education and in our panel you could see we have really expert you know in left and right so let me introduce them myself my name is shaikuddin and on my right um kate would you like to introduce yourself yes hi my name is kate I work as a legal executive in an international law firm. Alison? I'm Alison Jones. I work in community cohesion at Marion Richardson School. Fantastic. On my left. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Carmen. I'm an actress. I'm from London and British born Chinese. Fantastic. You know, last time we were here, you know, I couldn't um, actually uh, mention a lot of things you do. It's, it's, it's amazing. You're an actress, and I also you are have a new. Um, is it, is it a documentary coming out in in US? Uh, yes, it, it came out actually in November as a docudrama with um, Kit himself co-starring Kit about the origins of Wing Chun. Fantastic. So, what's your role in that drama? Um, it's meant to be educational and historical, so I'm meant to be one of the founders of Wing Chun. So I'm the nun. Fantastic. Kit got beaten up by you. Didn't he it? did for real. Oh, got beaten great. Up. <laughs> Kit, tell me about yourself. Um, you're an actor yourself, and um, not so much of an actor. Okay. <laughs> um, I came to this country when I was nine years old, and uh, it's been really challenging actually along the way. But uh, from early on, I, like, I knew I either want to be an artist or a lawyer, and I'm glad that I picked lawyer because it's a, it's a really challenging job, and it's, it's one that is really motivating and. Uh, very fulfilling in, in many respects. Brilliant. And listen, you know, we, our topic today is education. So we want to see uh, the, what are the issues. And uh, can you, if you can find the solutions, it will be great. And uh, there's, no, there's never wrong and right answers. Um, You've also been to Bangladesh yourself. You know, you've been traveling there and, you know, eating with your hands and fan fantastic. You know, you've been to Balagun, Bishnath, you name it. Tell us your experience in Bangladesh. Um, at Easter this year, I was really fortunate, and I went to, I went with my friend Jahanara and two of her seven children. We went to stay in her village just outside Tajpur, and so I lived with the family in the village with her five uncles in the next houses. Met her cousins, met her second cousins. During the time we were there, every morning, the driver who we had would come and pick us up, and we would go to visit one relative for lunch. And then we'd stop off and we'd have another, maybe come back for an hour or so and then go to another relative for the evening meal. So I think in the time I was there, I went to 16 different families. Each time I ate with my fingers, I swam in the local pond. I spent a day teaching maths in one of the little primary schools just outside Tajpur. I went to the college, Tajpur College, and met some of the students there. And I had two or three days when we went to visit Silet town. Was it difficult mm. eating with the fingers? In fact, it was easier to eat with my fingers, particularly when you're eating fish, because then you can find the fish bones. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, Kate, can I come to you yes. regarding uh, education in Hong Kong? Uh, you, you've grown up in Hong Kong, and we want to see um, the challenge. We want to take the challenge, see what you guys learned there. And you also grown up in this country as well. You've been to the local um, schools. So if you could talk about your um, Hong Kong style of education, I think the main difference between Hong Kong and Britain education is how competitive it was, or mm -hmm. it is, in Hong Kong. That um, parents or the children who are studying, they're not so much concerning about what they're learning, but they're overtly concerning about their grades. So it's a lot of pressure to try to get the grade rather than to do to see what they are actually learning in school. So when I was studying in uh, Hong Kong, I went for the same phase. phase. Uh, my parents were concerning about my grades because I was falling behind. But in a way, I was very lucky that my parents are much more relaxed 
and in, in terms of my grades, he wanted to make sure I understood what I was doing. So um, by the time I moved to this country, and it's to do with ed education, in fact, because um, 1997, the year that mainland China was uh, going to be handed back to uh, the Chinese government, my parents were concerning about my uh, future in Hong Kong. So uh, they decided to take me to England to, for a better education. And by the time I moved to this country and to study, immediately I noticed the difference. Mm. For example, the classes were a lot more smaller. So there was fewer children in one class. Because in Hong Kong, you can get up to 35 to 40 children in, one, in a single class. Why is that? Because Hong Kong is a rich place. It's, it's not uh, like a, you know, it's, it's a rich It's a rich place, place, but education has been placed not as a top priority. So the site for the school are very limited. And since property in Hong Kong, the price for the property in Hong Kong are very expensive. So to open up a, a huge public school, um, they do, the government don't see the initiative to do that. So um, the school in Hong Kong are very cramped. How was you disciplined? If say you, you missed or you, di you didn't behave well or you didn't do well in your exams. I mean, uh, with respect, of course, it's yes. their way of doing it, but how was um, you disciplined? Uh, it's probably a funny story now, but it wasn't back then. When I was in, a, when I was in Hong Kong, I'm, I'm not a very model student to say, per se. So uh, I think one time I was in class and I was caught talking to my fellow students. And the teacher back then would call my name, step in front of the entire class, and uh, I would be physically disciplined. So a, a long ruler would be brought out and I'd get a, mm. yeah, slapped on the, on the hand. Quite, quite hard, but for a child, any, any physical contact would be uh, Quite, quite. I'm difficult. sure it's changing now, right? Uh, right now it's different, of course, yeah. because right now is, I think, it has to do with location as well, uh, I must admit, because the school I was in was in my um, local village. So uh, the teacher back then, they had to use a slightly more primitive uh, uh, solution to, uh, to discipline the children. You know what, I had the same man, I got fixed <laughs> myself as well, yeah. front of everybody else as well. So Alison, is that, um, in your old days, I'm talking about, in the old days, was it disciplined like that? Like you get punished, you get bullied, you stand in front of everybody, get shamed up? Or but many, many, many years ago. Many, not many years Not in the last ni 60, 70 years. So certainly when I was growing up, I didn't get, schools were not allowed to use physical discipline on anybody. You might get sent out of class if you were being naughty to see the head teacher but you wouldn't be publicly humiliated. Mm. Just and there definitely wouldn't be physical discipline. You, you are linked with a <coughs> lot of um, uh, children and, and their parents as well. So, you know, when they come to you, do, you, do they complain about the kids, like, my kid's not doing well at all, I don't know what to do, what shall I do? Because they'd, I'm sure they would come for advice to you. Would they, do you get this kind of stuff? We do get parents saying, why are my children not succeeding? Why are my children getting behind at school? And sometimes we'll say, well, if you look at your child's attendance record, if they're only coming 90%, then they're going to lose 10% of their education. And parents say, oh, well, they've just had a day off here and a day off there. And then we look at their attendance, and it may only be 85 90%. And parents don't realise that those mm. odd day here and there affects the child. Another reason may be that the children are spending all their spare time on their iPads or watching TV, not when they've gone to mosque school, but when they're doing other things. And they're not actually spending time talking with their children. They're not spending time reading with their children. And we say, well, you know, in this country, education isn't just about teachers teaching. It's actually about parents getting involved, learning about what their children are learning about, taking them to places of interest, spending time with them, and reading, reading, reading with their children. You can always tell the difference between children where their parents have been involved in listening to them read every day and also reading to them. Between the and it doesn't matter if they read in whichever language they speak, if they're Chinese and they, speak, they read in Chinese for their children, if they're hearing people read to them and if they're listening 
and if they're joining in and reading with their parents, their reading will improve, and that makes a lot of difference, as you know, in education. That's true. Carmen, <coughs> anyhow, I forgot to say <laughs> that in the first place. Um, why do you think in our um, Asian culture we don't have parents are involving with our young children when they're learning or telling stories or reading for them. Do you have the same issues? In, in, in um, yeah, I think so. I can't speak for everyone there, but I think a lot of it is time, really. Um, if both parents are working, they don't really have time to take the children out outings or to read to them. Um, for example, my mum, she was a single parent, brought up two kids, worked six days a week. I don't blame her. She didn't have time to do homework with me. Really? But is it a cultural mm. thing or you think that genuinely people don't have time? Is it a cultural thing like, I'm not, I ain't got time for you, I'll get a teacher, I pay for a teacher to do the job for me? Yeah, I think that happens too. Um, sometimes they might think it, it, it's the children that should be doing their own homework, really. They should be taking responsibility for their own learning. It shouldn't be the parents that are chasing them up to do their homework, to go to school really. Certainly, so like, my mum never chased me up to do homework. I did it myself. I thought that was just the way, really. But do you realise, like, uh, I think we are making a gap here, you know, like communication gap, and, and your interaction with your kids are with somebody who's not you. Do, you. do you think it's uh, healthy? Do you feel...? I think it's going to be different for different families. Okay. So some families, they're going to need that interaction, really, especially if the child has got maybe an ADHD, they might need more attention from the families. You might, some kids are quite introverted, they're happy just to get on with their lives, really, don't really need the parents' involvement. I think it's different for everyone, really. Okay. Kate, what do you think? Mm. Interaction with your kids, teaching them, reading them the, you know, books, or...? Again, like Carmen said, okay, speaking from my personal experience, uh, my dad never well, had to work and my mum is a full-time uh, housewife so I find myself more closer to my mother than my father so but particular reason why uh, like she spent more time with you yeah yeah wife? she spent okay. much more time with me so again like uh, back to your point which is communication interaction that really does help you know and for for parents who are coming from a different background to uh, from a different culture like the Chinese culture in particular the parents can seem a little bit more distance to their children so that also can have an effect you know because that's how their parents did it mm. like, like my grandparents was very distanced to my father and to my mom to my mother so when they, when I was brought up, my father would probably deem it slightly normal not to uh, interact with me or communicate with me in a more intimate level. Where's my mum? But my mum is different because, you know, she's a full-time housewife. So I had to, she, it's not that she had to, she loves to spend more time. Do you time. feel it's a men thing or a woman thing? Like, men are always the way, okay, it's not my job. She will do it, she's at home, or wife will do it, or mother will do it. Is that a thing you realise, or is it genuinely he doesn't have time? In my personal experience, it's a little bit of both. You know, first, my father don't have the time. At the same time, he does seem to be slightly, you know, oh, this is mother's job mm. you know so. I think we ha I have a similar experience in my uh, finger as well like uh, the fathers are saying okay we're going out and walk and um, I've got a lot of other stuff to do um, I ain't got time I'd rather pay for a teacher to teach you your mother's day why don't you do it you're at home so mm. why don't you play a role but in that level see we always talking about I, I'm more connected with the mother because she's always there for me but if the father was there too it's, it's a missing, he's missing the love, he's missing the communication, he's missing the connection with him, man. It's, it's something, Indeed. you know, we need to realise. Alison, um, do you feel like that is, I think it's a culture thing, genuinely, yeah, I yeah, believe yeah, Asian culture thing, like we are men's are yeah. busy outside distance. than inside. You know, I'm sure in, in this culture, in UK, we have a lot of parents that get involved with education. They will read for them. And we were mentioning earlier on, like how you do in your house, it's fantastic. In my own house? Yeah. I mean, I have four sons who are now in their 20s and early 30s. 
My husband, I know you said about your father coming home and doing long hours. My husband, all the time we've had children, has worked from half seven. He's left the house at half seven and got home between half seven and eight in the evening. So he's done 12 hour days. But it's about both of you being involved as parents. I might have done some of the after school stuff, but he would come home and he might take them to the park for half an hour, 45 minutes, or he would read to them every night. And our children would remember the fact that dad did things with them, and oh. that's been really important. He would also do lots of sports with them at weekends. Take them, we'd all go bike riding, or we'd go um, out exploring different museums in London, or as they got more involved in sport, we'd all go and do sport together. And I think it's really important that if there are two parents, that both parents are seen to be doing school things with them, not just the mum. Um, one of the things we do at Marion Richardson School now is that every year group from reception up to year, year six has one trip on a Saturday morning with their fathers that links to what they're learning in school. Why is it fathers? Well, we do one trip for mothers and one trip okay. for fathers. <laughs> okay. Right, the reason, the but you asked a question out. about men. If we just said, year six are learning about the planets, we're going to go to the planetarium on Saturday morning, I guarantee that you would say, oh, that's the mother's job mm. to do it. If you say that, if, you, if all the parents know there's going to be one trip for fathers, one trip for mothers, you're more likely, and we've discovered Saturday mornings are good, because I've had fathers come and they say, oh, I was working for Ubar until two in the morning, but my son got me up at seven o'clock and now I've got to be here going to see the transport museum. But, and I'll always say to them, your children will not remember how many PlayStation games they give you or how many times you've taken them out for meals. What they'll remember is that you, you spent time with them on a Saturday morning getting up and going and learning with them and going and exploring the planetarium or going and exploring the cable car. They will remember that. They will not remember yeah. how much money you've spent on them. And I know that from our own children, that they remember us reading with them, going on trips together, exploring the world together. We didn't go to Disneyland Paris. We took them backpacking around Japan <laughs> and we went to Nepal with them. We didn't do, we went on local transport around Morocco. We didn't do, wow. so we caught buses and we went in little local taxis when we went to visit a friend in Morocco. So we did not your standard beach holidays. We did, stayed in youth hostels and things like that. But the most important thing is that we shared experiences. I think it's togetherness, <coughs> isn't it? You live together even in a hard time, in a good time, but in whatever time, it's us, it's us, it's us. It's amazing, honestly. It's and really and truly, parents spend a lot of time talking on their phone to their friends. They spend lots of time going off and seeing their friends. And really and truly, we only have our children who want to do things with us, really from up to the age of about 13, 14. After 13, 14, they don't really want their parents that involved. And it's not that much out of your life, 10 years, to give them, to support them with their education and to support them with their learning. It's can I, um, Keith, can I yes. say, you know, like in this UK, we are thinking about um, learning from Japan, their style of study. They're mm -hmm. doing very well, actually, in Japan, China, Hong Kong. We want to bring them here, the teachers, and learn here in the UK. That's, that's, you should be very proud of that. I mean, that is amazing. You know, that is something... Special. <coughs> well, I believe so, but it's very difficult, again, you know, to, because, uh, again, from my personal experience, you know, studying in this country wasn't easy, so... Uh, uh, Do you, a particular reason why? Like uh, because uh, in Hong Kong, uh, we were taught English, but it was taught as a as a fringe kind of subject. So for me to to, to uh, come to, uh, come to this, this country and try to speak a proper sentence was very difficult. And uh, but then again, like you said, now that we see a lot more people from China, Japan, come in here, indeed, uh, it's, uh, it's a very proud thing. To because we're very interested. Your you guys are doing you know amazing stuff. Uh, you talk about any kind of. IT stuff, or you're talking about, you know, TV, you're talking about cars. You guys are doing amazing stuff, man. You know, it's something, of course, we're proud of as well. So we want to learn. But the way we're saying, we, have we moved on from those old style of 
were you teaching or do you think they add to it? How did you guys become so good then, if you know? I think it's a, the ability to, uh, to adapt, you know, in my opinion. Uh, it's just the way that, just the way that for me, if I couldn't understand. Are you guys more disciplined? Uh, Is I that think one that, thing? that did help, you know, not completely. Because uh, I'm the only child in, 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 in that sense. Mm. So I have very few distractions, you know. So that, in a way, did help my study. And to see my fellow students at the same time, to be that disciplined, to, to want to learn as well, that add to my... Um, my attitude towards my, uh, my learning in class. Whereas in Hong Kong, there's so many distractions, like in class. Because uh, I, I wasn't a, a particularly a good grade student in Hong Kong, so I've been lumped or grouped with uh, fellow students that, who are in my cap uh, capacity. So we get so distracted with each other. So we're not paying, if you're the student next to you, not paying attention, it will cause, it will have some sort of chain effect on yourself. So you become distracted as well. Do you, uh, can I ask um, Cameron, do you think it's a good, if you have a uh, brother and sisters with you going to the same school and learning together, and do you think it's a competition, like I'm gonna do better than him? Or uh, do you think if he's a single person, he does better? Oh, it depends on the family, I think. If it was siblings going to school learning together, I think that parents would compare them and there would be some sort of competitiveness between them. I don't know how healthy that would be. That could work both ways. They could help each other, make them each other better, or they could resent each other's success. Tell me, give me some of your experience in this country you studied. Um, did you find it difficult? Did you find adopting the new environment or the people? Makes, was it difficult for you in the beginning? Because oh, I've always been here, I've always been in London, so I haven't seen anything apart from London in terms of education. But it's just hearing stories from my friends and seeing what happens on TV. Did you watch that program about the teachers from China coming to London to teach? I don't know if you I saw that documentary. I didn't watch it, but I knew they were coming and there was some talk about it. It was very interesting. So they were very big on discipline, uh, respect for your teachers. Maybe you do something wrong, you know, you get told off in front of the class. Um, over here, it seems to be slightly a bit more lenient. If you're rude to the teacher, you don't get that discipline that they might have in China or in Hong Kong. And certainly, I find that the pace teaching here is slightly slower than, than over there in, in East Asia, which might account for, you know, if they're flourishing or not. So you might, you might learn faster, or you might get left behind. It can work either way. Is it based on age, like classes, or is it more like if you pass, you go to the next level? Or if you fail, you stay where you are. Um, in I'm talking about China. Or yeah, um, I think before you do get left behind. I'm not sure now anymore. Do you have to um, stay behind? They still kind of do. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. In my experiences. Okay. I do find over here in England that they do have different class levels. So you might have, you know, four different levels mm -hmm. for maths. So if you're better, you might be in level one. And if you're not so good, you'd be in level four. And then the pace would depend on what class that you're in. But over in Hong Kong, you might not have these different levels. It might just be all in one class or different level students in one class. You know, we're going to go for a break in a minute. So we'll I'll come back and talk about some bullying. You know, like it's a global thing and it's, it's difficult for a lot of people, a lot of uh, our youngsters especially. And um, I'm sure somewhere and some of us have ex own experience of being bullied. And stuff. I definitely it's, did. it's really, really difficult. Um, we had a young boy a few months ago, actually, he killed himself in Kent and, um, because he was bullied and the parents couldn't link up with him. See, when you, when you don't have that communication, when you have your kids fearing away, they want to share his problems, it is difficult. That time it's not good enough to say, I ain't got time for you, mm. oh, I have to work and I have to do that. It's your own child, who is he going to go to? That's when they actually link up with those bad people or bad guys or bad gang or somewhere they'll go and spend their time. And if, and if you have communication well, he will come to you and tell you I had this problem. 
So after the break, we'll talk about those things. Dear viewers, stay with us. You could call us anyway, and we've got the number there. And I'll see you after the break, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh.